this fuel storage facility outside of London that went up in flames. This was a truly explosive engineering disaster. It was absolutely extraordinary. I've never seen anything like it. It was just such a huge wall of flames. This was a disaster just waiting to happen. With hazardous substances like these, there is simply no margin of error. Across the world, every major economy relies on oil. Massive amounts of it. And in order to ensure that supply is constant, it needs to be stopped by it. But storing oil safely isn't easy. Fire safety engineer Fatih Tarada explains. Storing fuels, especially on a large scale, requires constant monitoring of how much fuel you've got. And also, not just the liquid fuel, you also have to think of the volatiles, the, the gas as well, the vapor, where that's going. Because the vapor can actually be a lot more dangerous than the liquid fuel itself. And around an hour outside of London, lies Bunsfield, a facility specially designed to safely store dangerous resources. Bunsfield is one of the largest oil storage depots in the UK. It was designed to safely store up to 60 million gallons of oil and petrochemicals. And like any facility of this type, safety is the primary goal. All of the storage cylinders are surrounded by bund walls physical barriers that contain the contents of the cylinders in the event of a spillage. The bund walls are specifically designed to have a greater capacity than the storage containers they surround. In the event of a spillage, all escaped liquids will stay in a controlled area. In addition, all storage containers are equipped with an array of level monitors and safety valves. However, even the most secure facilities can suffer from catastrophe. On Saturday, December 10th, 2005, a routine delivery of fuel arrived at the Bunsfield facility for storage. The filling team started to input petrol into the storage tank 912 as evening set in. And we're talking about a lot of fuel, so this was going to take some time. The process seemed to be going smoothly, until suddenly, something went wrong. By 5.37 a.m. on December 11th, the level within the tank exceeded its ultimate capacity, and the petrol started to spill out of vents on the tank roof. No safety alarms were triggered, and the highly flammable liquid continued to overflow unnoticed. After spotting an unexpected vapor cloud, a member of the Bunsfield team hit the alarm, which activated the emergency water pumps. A vapor cloud explosion occurred almost immediately. After a terrifying explosion at one of the UK's largest fuel storage facilities, rapidly spread throughout the facility. David Mitchell lives near the site and remembers the horrors of that night. My wife and I were in bed when we heard a huge explosion, which really made us jump. All the alarms started going off, smoke alarms and things. And my first thought was that a plane had crashed on us. It was so loud and the whole house was shaking, literally shaking. I could see the curtains dancing around. And then the ceilings come down and the walls started to crack. All the plasterwork was cracked and all the ceilings in the kitchen had collapsed. At this point I was in total shock because it just looked like the house had been destroyed. But my real thought was to, because I had a young family, was just to get out of here. When I came out into the back garden, all the windows looked like they were gonna fall out any moment. And the top half the, was leaning over and there was a huge crack. Um, across the top of the house there and tiles would come off the roof and in fact you know the, there was actually a hole you could stand in one of the bedrooms and look up and you could see through to the sky. Chief Firefighter Roy Wilcher and his firefighters were called to the scene. 
They describe approaching the site and seeing trees blasted, dead animals, birds in the road, cars abandoned, a scene of devastation. The ensuing fire was the largest seen in the UK since World War II. So I remember looking at Bunsfield over there and thinking it was absolutely extraordinary. I've never seen anything like it. It was just such a huge wall of flames because this is seconds after the, you know, the explosion. So all the petrol had only just gone up. The smoke cloud could be seen from space. Uh, the smoke cloud blacked out uh, central London. So Victoria was like midnight at midday. 40 people fell victim to injuries, but fortunately, there were no fatalities. The fire lasted five days, with massive amounts of water and firefighting foam required to bring the blaze under control. In the aftermath, investigators had to uncover what had gone wrong. They first examined the automatic safety features on the faulty cylinder. The tank had two forms of level control, a gauge that enabled the employees to monitor the filling operation, and an independent high-level switch, which was meant to close down operations automatically if the tank was overfilled. It was clear the initial level monitoring gauge had malfunctioned. There was no way to alert the control room staff that the tank was filling to dangerous levels. Further investigation revealed that the independent high-level switch had also failed due to a missing component. The compromised switch mechanism, combined with a defective monitor gauge, caused the fuel to overflow and fill the area within the bun wall. However, the liquid fuel itself wasn't actually the cause of the explosion. As the fuel came into contact with the air, molecules on its surface started to evaporate, forming vapor which began to rise. The bunded wall you can see there is, is there to contain liquid. It's not there to contain vapor. So vapor would spread over. A vast combustible cloud now filled the air. This was a powder keg ready to go off. All it needed was a tiny spark. Investigators believe that tiny spark was created only after fire alarms were manually activated. As members of the public and tanker drivers noticed the vapor cloud, they alerted site workers who hit the alarm, automatically triggering the fire water pump. Ironically, it's thought that a spark from this pump is what ignited the vapor cloud. With the fuel ablaze, another failure came to light, this time in the bund wall itself. The bundle contained another engineering oversight. Plastics and silicon had been used in its construction. The heat of the explosion caused these to melt, allowing fuel to escape the bund wall and subsequently the fire to spread. Fatih Tarada was part of the investigation team that uncovered this catastrophic failure within the bund wall joints. If you have a bund for a hydrocarbon product, you expect it to operate especially in the case of fire, because that is the primary risk that you are designing against. So if it doesn't operate, if you have a fire, what's it there for? The legacy of the Bunsfield disaster prompted many questions when it comes to the safe storage of fuel. What should have happened, there should have been uh, electronic alarms, there should have been computer alarms, there should have been human intervention, and none of those worked to stop that petroleum being pumped down. All this has been factored into the rebuild of the facility, with particular focus on the bun wall containment system. It was realized that not only did they need to contain liquid, any material used in the joints would have to be able to withstand explosions and fire. Although the facility is once again up and running, the long-term impact of the explosion at Bunsfield still linger to this day. The environmental, social and economic toll was considerable. While no one lost their life, some have yet to fully recover from the effect of the explosion. Whereas before, it was a catalogue of errors and I can't believe that anybody would allow that sort of lack of safety to ever occur again. 
However, I'm hoping that everybody learned from the experience last time and that everything now is state of the art and all the proper procedures are there.